This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we'll get a look at the second-year man, Sam Darnold, and the New York Jets as they match up with Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With that, let's head over to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa for the call of this one. We bring in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle with the New York Jets. With you from the booth, Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis. A CDR matchup here. A couple of teams last year that were really pretty similar. Both under 500. Both missed the playoffs. And they both think that they can turn things around in 2019. Yeah, how about 2018, though? A case of the haves and the have-nots. In 16 game seasons in the NFL, for the first time last year, no one finished 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, you know that in baseball, basketball, other sports, turnarounds can take three, four, five years. In football... Could just be a few months. Santos out now. He'll kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Jets work their way onto the field, led by the number three overall pick in 2018. Sam Darnold and during the offseason Darnold was asked where he was looking to improve he told everybody being more comfortable in the pocket he looked back to the numbers from his rookie campaign 17 touchdowns and 13 starts so just imagine what a relaxed and more experienced Darnold might be able to accomplish with a stronger set of receivers now here in 2019 now this is Le'Veon Bell with a reception. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backside of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got my cover. Oh, we just snuck out there. And they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. They'll run here with a former Steeler. This is Le'Veon Bell. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. A shotgun snap for Darnold. Throw left side complete. It's Bell. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Winston and the Bucs take over now first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. This is Peyton Barber. He led them in rushing a season ago. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Big Leonard Williams there on the stop. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. Peyton Barber had his best year running the football in 2018, and he was ninth in the league last year in rushing attempts. The only issue, yards per carry. 
total yards Rick under Eddie. 900. Back, New head coach Bruce Arians, he believes he can improve his efficiency. On second and nine, Winston. And that's going to be incomplete. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. One of the best young safeties in the NFL, Jamal Adams. Keep an eye out for him because no one is safe when he's on the field, including mascots. Just ask Pat the Patriot. Jamal Adams was also the 2019 Pro Bowl defensive MVP. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Jameis to throw it. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Barber on first and 10. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 11 more on that one and another first down. Peyton Barber, a surprise workhorse for the Buccaneers in 2018. I don't think they expected him to have 234 carries, but he certainly felt like he could carry the load and just carried it there for a nice gain. his first carry. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. First down, they go with Barber again. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. They'll try to throw now, Winston. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Leonard Williams, the former number six overall pick, got the sack that time. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. Winston now. And that's complete. It's Allington. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up fourth. They dialed up the blitz on third down, and your worry is a defense that they can hit you with a big play in that situation. Instead, the blitz pays off, able to rally to the football and make the play. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And New York set to take the field. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room if you have to run the punter out there. Under pressure, and down he goes in the end zone, and that's a safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here, a safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's pile this play away, because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference.
So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Winston gives to Barber, and he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag. But you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Ready. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Working out of the gun. Winston. Flushed out right. Throw right side. Taken in by Godwin. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Chris Godwin. 45 yards. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Matt Gay on for the extra point. This is good as they extend it out now to a 9-0 lead. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here, Santos to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line Let's of the go. end zone for Let's a touchback. The New York set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Right Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. It's caught by Quincy Anunua. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That is now 19-yard gains on back-to-back -back plays. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. Caught here by Bell. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go all over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Throwing here on third down, Darnold hooking up over the middle with Herndon. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. Now 
After one, it's 9-0. Ready for the second quarter, and it's our visitors with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Darnold from the red zone now. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it will set him back for second down. When you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack. But that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. On second down, it's Bell. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point to drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll start on the ground with Barber, trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there, second down. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Second down, Winston. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Jets will take over first and ten. And New York set to take the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-points CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goal posts. And a pass complete to a new one. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Good work after the catch. Going to net them 23 and a first. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. So one play and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's Darnold. 
Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Griffin. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? And they'll dump it over the top to him. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Darnold. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing. And as a player, that means an awful lot. Well, they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out. But does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. And I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be here sky high. Here we go. Here we go. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no targets, but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. I know how receivers think. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. He's going to run. Going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Picked off at the 33. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Now, New York set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. With looking for Crowder, and it's intercepted. Picked up by MJ Stewart. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. That's where they'll take over. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way.
gearing up to go again here on offense. Andre Ellington works his way back out there. He only has a single solo carry, one. Numero uno, second quarter. They need to get in the ball more, don't they? I'm not the greatest statistician in the world. Yeah, you are. But a back like that with only one carry kind of takes me back to college in the classroom. Not enough evidence to declare what you should do the rest of the game. Give him the ball some more and find out. Will they incorporate him? We'll find out. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. He is tough to bring down Jameis Winston. Yeah, Charles, I remember calling a baseball game of his. He played baseball Florida State, too. And you saw his legs, tree trunks, sprayed in to those baseball pants. I said, how could anybody bring this guy down? And that's part of the beauty of his game because he has that toughness, that thick body. He may not beat you sprinting, but he's real sharp with his mind, and he knows how to get away from people. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Chris Godwin, the former Penn Stater, should see an increase in action and production in 2019 with Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson gone from the team. 842 yards in 2018, second only to Mike Evans on the Buccaneers. Here's Barber. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. On second and goal, Winston, and he's got it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They'll come out in the pistol. The Bucks on third down. Just one for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. They'll run with Barber. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. And now Coach Bruce Arians has made the call. His guys will go for two. They go play action. Winston on the move to his left. And that is incomplete. And he will step out of bounds. Oh, what a mistake there. And the two-point try will be unsuccessful. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The New York set to take the field. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, 
only way to play good defense. The Jets on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Got an open man. It's a noon one. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. So we come upon halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. From the gun, Winston. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. That was a nice grab. Just couldn't get the feet down. Right? You need that toe tap sequence there. Whatever size shoe he's wearing, probably need about a half size smaller to complete that one. He's got Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And a good burst there gets him seven up to midfield. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Bucks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he's got a man. It's the tight end Howard complete. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face match. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of sea ball. Get check, ball. Check. Watch 54. Watch 54. <laughs> On second and 12, Winston steps away to his left. And he's caught right at the 10-yard line. 
And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10 yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, it was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Pretty good run right there. It's a good pickup of seven yards, and now they're looking at second and goal. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They'll try and run it in with Jones. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Yo, 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 yo. Yo! From the shotgun, it's Winston. The quick slant caught. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie-cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game being on second half no matter what with his first five minutes first three whatever this was a big score to start the second half extra point by gay is up and good and that could be important as that makes this a 16 point lead a 10 play drive that time and it ends with a touchdown for the bucks To the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. Here's the Jets offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. He was trying to find his tight end, Chris Herndon. And it's second down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he's on to punt for New York. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Bucks now. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, I bet you can take the spirit away from another team. That they're driving. Oh, Barber loses it, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. We're going to shut you down. We're going to 
This defense, Charles, they needed some type of a spark to help get them back in this game. I think they just got their spark. No doubt about it. And you know that's all they discussed. How can we get ourselves moving again? How can we get our team going? This definitely qualifies. challenge. Our referee is going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that will be considered a fumble. Winston now after the fumble recovery. Buying time to his left. Got a man. It's Brashad Perriman. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. He was out there waving his arms. And when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is because you got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space. And he found the right blitz coming and down he goes. Jordan Jenkins in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Here's Bradley Pinion now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And it's fielded at the 34. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Jets offense now works their way back onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. On the catch, it's Crowder. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. A loss of two there. Second down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. On second down, it's Bell, and they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Tackle made that time by Vito Vea. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe they'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Here's another first and goal, but from a little further back this time following the penalty. After the penalty, it's Bell. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. 
So it'll be second and goal when we return. We've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. Second and goal, the lone man in the backfield, Le'Veon Bell. Now Jarnold. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Jets are able to close the gap just a bit. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch. And feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. A very pivotal two-point try that does not go their way. Now it's a big uphill battle for the rest of the fourth quarter. The attempt was to try and make it a one-score game, right? Touchdown, get two, and now you've tied it up. Instead, they don't get it, still down ten. Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. So they try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and that will come the offense as they take over. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their own 37. A shotgun snap for Darnold. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Quincy Anoon with the intended receiver, and now it's second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. To throw again on second down. Darnold got his man, Robbie Anderson. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Robbie Anderson, 63 yards. And the Jets are able to make this a close game again. So that's a really big play here in the fourth quarter. And don't look now. They're right back in this game. Did it feel to you as it did to me? that maybe they were a little bit soft in what they were lining up with on defense. Almost like they were protecting the lead rather than trying to make a play. And now that lead is down to just one score. We play to win. Let's go. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Hey, watch the screen, watch the screen. Watch the screen. Darnold from the gun. This one caught by Crowder. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down to about the 21 or 22. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Darnold now to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Bell. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Throwing again on second down. Darnold out left to Anderson. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Again, Darnold. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Looking to throw again on second down. Darnold, that's complete right around the eight. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. A great job to hold him to just a yard there. Now it's fourth and goal. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. This one fielded at the five. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Working out of the gun, Winston, dancing to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run, deep left side. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. Pretty lucky to get the football back. Had his target out there waving the arms, saying I'm open, but maybe he didn't see him quick enough. And I know the jokes are always about defensive backs' hands. What really actually happens, you don't get many opportunities. You get over anxious, and you start to think about taking it away and going the other way instead of focusing and catching. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Tremaine Johnson. Nothing the passer defense. How big is that penalty? Wipe out the INT. You'd hate to be the teammate that caused that penalty and wiped out the interception. You got to face that guy in the locker room. Not a lot of fun for you, and you hurt your squad. They will push his way through. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. For a big guy, Jameis sure can move. Did a nice job there picking up the first down with his legs. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Move it around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but 
It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. It's Barber. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> we got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. On first down, Barber. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. On second down, Barber. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Peyton Barber, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead now up to 14. the touchdown here Santos to kick this one away Darnold and the Jets now down by two touchdowns a minute 51 on the clock field goals useless at this point they need two touchdowns and they need them in short order down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over in your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our... Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. Push the foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. On first and ten, Darnold, and he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It'll be a gain of 11, and the Jets are going to get a new set of downs. That's going to set him back five yards. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. From the shotgun, it's a give to Bell. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. A good comeback there after the penalty, nine yards, and it's second and six. 
And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but contact and pass interference. And now where does the ball get placed? Yeah, at the one-yard line. One-yard line. They gave up excellent real estate on that one. That's going to work. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Extra point good by Catanzaro. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. A drive that time of six plays. And it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. So a little under 50 seconds to go. Plenty of time if they can get this onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here i just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical now the jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. On third down, here comes Barber. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. Charles, we saw a comeback bid fall just a little short, but give them credit, they were able to hold on, withstand that comeback, and ultimately win it by the slim margin. And bottom line, when it's all said and done, they don't ask you how much you won by. They just want to know, did you win? And that they did. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.